powerful rip currents off the tip of the South African coast produce the world's richest feeding grounds for the great white shark. Writer Peter Benchley has come to the seaside town of Gans Bay to learn more about the mysterious animal that inspired his most famous character in the novel Jaws. This is a, a perversity in a way, an obsession that is a little unstable, but never mind. Once you spend your life with sharks, you'll go anywhere to see them. The great white shark is, in my judgment, one of our last dragons. It's one of the last animals on Earth about which there is still a great deal of mystery. It is the shark that has always been considered the prototypical man-eater. It is the shark because of that that I chose to use as the star, if you will, the protagonist of Jaws. I've been asked many times over the years whom I base the character Quint on in Jaws. Jackie is Quint without the craziness. With a sense of the sea, the way great captains are, they are full of a sense of the sea. They smell the weather before having to read about it. I mean, he is, he's truly a wonderful captain. I would trust him with my life, as indeed we do. Anchoring at a place off Dyer Island, Smith oversees a kind of sacrificial offering to the great white. And Benchley, who has dived many times with this shark of sharks, participates. I think there are days when when these animals don't, don't want to go for synthetic bait. They want the real thing. I feel good about the temperature of the water. I feel good about the, the situation as far as the sea is concerned. Uh, we've got enough food for the shark. It's all up to the shark now. You never know. With a white shark, it is an animal which you can only guess. They are very scarce. Being the apex predator in the ocean, nature makes them scarce because the balance of nature, the food chain, could not take an overabundance of a super predator like a great white shark. We waited a while for the first shark to appear. Hey, shark over here. Right over there. When they did, it was incredible. The great white shark can grow to at least 19 feet and can weigh at least two tons. We made an honest attempt to get it that time. Yeah. It is an epiphany every time I see a white shark appear, be it from the surface or underwater. This is such a wonderful animal. It isn't the fastest, uh, it isn't the biggest animal in the sea, but it is the most efficient. It is virtually unchanged in 30 to 50 million years. You have as close to a perfect animal as nature could make. It is essentially intended to do three things, swim, eat, and make more great white sharks. Here we go. Okay, when do you want to go into the cage? Because I think we can possibly keep the shark here. Well, as soon as we can get our stuff on, I would guess. We're off the coast of South Africa, where Jaws author Peter Benchley with his wife Wendy prepare to enter the world of the great white shark. Get in the cage? 
I think so. All right? I think so. Among all the sharks in the world, this animal, the white shark, is unmistakable. Other sharks will circle around and make threats the great white doesn't need to. It fears nothing but a larger version of itself. Teased into the area by Chum, the great white's superior sense of smell keeps it at boat side. The sharks were very interested in the bait, but they were not interested in the cage. Vanished into the gloom. Since the great white has decided not to come to the cage, the Benchleys return to Jackie Smith's boat. Sure was pretty down there. He was there, and he suddenly we got in, and he wasn't there. Yeah, that's right. I think that shark uh, just decided to move off. And do you think there's a chance that something about us put him off—the heartbeat or it, the change in the electromagnetic field, whatever it is? I think it could be the heartbeat uh, because that shark was still circling under the boat. This is uh, where I got bumped by a white shark. It wasn't a bite, this was just a bump. I had a fish hanging on the side of my, my body and I must have been moving my legs when I pulled up the elastics of the spear gun and I felt the bump, I found my leg was bleeding. I knew that I was wrong by putting bait onto my body and it was not the fault of the shark. It has been proven time and time again that sharks in general and great whites very specifically do not want to eat humans. 70% of the time, a great white shark will spit the human being out, having made the judgment, no, this is too bony, there's not enough fat, this is not enough of an energy supply for me. The problem, of course, is that when a 3,000-pound animal samples a human being, he can do a terrible amount of damage. Although we have come to regard this creature with a kind of respectful awe in recent years, such was not the case back in 1974, when Peter Benchley's novel, Jaws, cast the great white shark as every ocean swimmer's worst nightmare. It literally emptied the beaches. Contrary to popular belief, I have never felt a whit of guilt about writing Jaws. It caused an unfortunate image for a while, but it also caused, I think, a lot of interest in the oh, animals yeah. so that people yeah. began to study them. And so I'll take some blame, but I'll take some credit, too. <laughs> One of the things that I've been most fortunate in, in having all of these chances for the last 28 years to dive is to grow up with the environmental movement and to change my own sensibility from one of novelistic sensationalism to educational conservation. Well, Jackie, it's been wonderful and I thank you. A great yeah. privilege. Thanks, and it's been a privilege having you on the boat. The ocean is the largest wilderness on the planet. It is not our territory. We are not the rulers of this kingdom and we must always be aware of that. In this realm, there is no animal like the great white shark. <laughs>